morning, church. I welcome you all to another Power Pack Sunday podcast service. It's the first week of the month of December, so you know what's coming up, right? The most awaited season, yes, is the season of Christmas. It's the season where we have family reunions, gift exchanges. going around in our neighborhoods and singing carols hanging out with one another christmas parties putting up christmas trees and christmas lights in our homes right it's a it's an exciting season and yes yeah uh, it's also the time when we remember the birth of our lord jesus christ yeah i forgot about that oh 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 hold on for a moment right it's so easy for us to forget the true reason for the season right it's so easy for us to forget that christmas first and foremost is a time for us to remember the birth of our lord jesus christ right the lights the parties the hangouts the gift exchange they have no value in and of itself christ is the reason for the season So how about we have a Christmas tradition for this year? And if everything works out well, we can have this tradition every year, okay? So here's what I propose. All right? We as a church celebrate Christmas on the 25th of December. And the Gospel of Luke has 24 chapters. So how about we read one chapter from the Gospel of Luke every day? so that by the time christmas eve is here we are reminded by god's word what christmas is all about and why we celebrate it and the reason i'm suggesting the gospel of luke is not just because it has 24 chapters though that's a cool thing in and of itself but the gospel of luke compared to the other gospel accounts has a more descriptive and detailed record of the birth the death and the resurrection of our lord jesus christ so what do you think of that one small tradition i believe that doing this will help us to prepare our hearts for what's going to come up and it will also help us to have a more biblical christmas this year so brothers and sisters let us remind ourselves that the true reason for us to rejoice in the season is that the people who walk in darkness will see a great light those who live in a dark land the light will shine on them for a child will be born to us a son will be given to us and the government will rest on his shoulders and his name will be called wonderful counselor mighty god eternal father prince of peace there will be no end to the increase of his government or of peace on the throne of david and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and righteousness from then on and forevermore the zeal of the lord of hosts will accomplish this amen so with that thought in mind Let us make sure that we have a biblical Christmas and let us start our service with a word of prayer. Let us pray. God our loving Father, we thank you and we praise you for you have brought us forth to this wonderful season of Christmas where we are going to remember the birth of your son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord It is so easy for us to forget the reason behind the season. But your word is enough for us, Lord, and your word reminds us why we celebrate the season. O oh, Father, that before the cross and before the resurrection there was the incarnation. That on that silent night the infinite one became an infant. And we are here to celebrate and to rejoice in that that the god of the universe to redeem sinful men like us became a human 
and died on our behalf. And it all started on that silent night. Father, we pray that you would help us to prepare our hearts in order for your coming. And we pray that you would help us to worship you in spirit and in truth as we move ahead with the service for today. Be with us, Lord. We love you, for you loved us first. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us have a wonderful time of worship.
Brothers and sisters, now is the time of communion where we remember the horrible death that the Lord Jesus went through. Why do we do this? Why should we have this time when we remember the cross? The prophet Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 53 gives us the reason. Let's read Isaiah 53 verse 3 to 6. He was despised and rejected by mankind. a man of suffering and familiar with pain like one from whom people hide their faces he was despised and we held him in the low esteem surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering yet we consider him punished by god stricken by him and afflicted but he was pierced for our transgression he was cursed for our iniquities the the punishment that brought us peace was on him and by his wounds we are healed we all like sheep have gone astray each of us has turned to to our own way and the lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all one thing to remind ourselves over here is that isaiah is writing about the suffering that the messiah will go through 700 years before the messiah uh, even came to the world and this was exactly what the lord jesus went through he was despised and rejected by us we hid our faces for, from him, him we considered him to punished by god for the many crimes that he did he was stricken and afflicted by god we mocked him we jeered at him and we thought by doing so we were serving justice to him yet what does isaiah says here it was we who were in the wrong while he went through his this suffering it was him taking our pain and bearing our suffering he was being pierced for the transgression that we committed he was being crushed by god for our sins the punishment that was reserved for us he took it thus bring peace between us and god and by his stripes we were healed we were the ones who like sheep has gone astray but he came to us like a good shepherd and rescued us even at the price of his own death while we were standing proud of what we had done to the messiah he hung there praying father forgive them it's so easy for us to forget this thing brothers and sisters but in his mercy he gives us a new day every day to remind ourselves of his great love for us the bread we eat is a sign of christ's body that was broken for us and the grape juice we drink is a sign of his blood that was shed for our sake let's pray for the communion most holy and gracious god We come before you at this time just as we are broken, weak and repentant. We are sorry Father for this for the time we 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 have cherished our sin more than we cherished you. We ask this morning Lord to grant us a spirit of gratitude that in light of what you did for us we live a life of holiness and service before you pleasing your heart. May we never forget the cross of Calvary. We love you Lord in Jesus name we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, now we'll have a time of giving. Let me remind you to have a cheerful heart. No matter how much you give, the proceeds from this collection will be used to help the poor families in our church and also for the advancement of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let us pray for the contribution. God our loving Father, from the time we were in our mother's womb to this very hour in our life, You have provided for us faithfully without fail. 
how good you have been to us oh lord we pray at this time of giving when we give back a little from the lord that we have received that we would give it in a way that is pleasing to you and blesses your heart use this collection lord to glorify your name may the poor be taken care of and the lost be reached out to in jesus name we pray amen Good morning family of God fathers mothers brothers sisters boys girls december is upon us 11 months have flown by and in 26 days we will say goodbye to 2021 and welcome the new year 2022 and what a year 2021 has been no one could have predicted what this world would have gone through i don't think anyone can predict what 2022 is going to be like only god knows the future and he tells us to seek him and to find him though he is not far from each one of us we finished a wonderful series last week on the book of acts many of you were on this journey with us for the last one year so many stories so many insights so much to learn from our early brothers and sisters in the first century and if you think 2021 was tough you should talk to them who lived under severe persecution having to flee from one city to another or one country to another i know that they are not alive today but you can hear them talking to you by reading about their faith, their courage, their determination in the 28 chapters in the book of Acts. You know, Luke the doctor, the physician has done a simply remarkable job in telling the story of the first 30 years of the early church. So what shall we talk about this morning? Okay, well, you'll know soon enough. The Bible in Genesis chapter 1 tells us that when god created man he created him in his own image in his own likeness male and female he created them so we been created in god's image and so we as men and women are supposed to reflect god's likeness right and what is god like well to explain that or to talk about that would take some time because there is so much to say that even a lifetime would not be enough to talk about what god is like but in exodus chapter 34 we get a glimpse of what god is like when he talks to moses there are probably hundreds if not thousands of characteristics or qualities of god that we can describe but for now let's see what god says about himself let's read exodus chapter 34 verse 6 And he passed in front of Moses proclaiming The Lord the Lord the compassionate and gracious God slow to anger abounding in love and faithfulness maintaining love to thousands and forgiving wickedness rebellion and sin God described himself as compassionate gracious slow to anger abounding in love and faithfulness maintaining love to thousands and someone who forgives wickedness rebellion and sin i mean wouldn't you like to have someone like this as your best friend and advisor you know there are thousands of things that we can say about god but god chooses these words especially to describe himself to moses who in turn will tell the israelites so now consider if these are the qualities that god uses to describe himself 
and we are created in God's likeness, then it should be true that we also should possess these attributes, right? And I believe that we do possess these qualities, but in different degrees. What I mean is that some of us are more compassionate than others. Some of us are slow to anger. Well, some can get angry very quickly. But God, when he described himself, he is 100% perfect in all these qualities all the time. And he expects us also to reflect these qualities, not some of the time, but all of the time. Now, to a great extent, we are influenced by the people around us or the people you hang around with. So if you are surrounded by compassionate people, generally, I, I say generally because there are always exceptions, you will find yourself becoming more compassionate. I know that before I became a follower of Jesus, I was not a compassionate person. I did not like poor people. I did not like the beggars. I would mutter to myself, these people, they should get a job. No, they should work and not beg. But after becoming a disciple of Jesus, I changed because I saw how disciples were helping the poor with food, with clothing, with, with medicines. And I became involved with a number of them helping the poor in many places. Being around such compassionate people helped me become more compassionate. In the same way, when you are around people who are patient and who do not get angry quickly, guess what? you will find yourself getting to be more and more like them. Or at least I hope so. Because imagine if you are around people who take a very long time to get angry and you find yourself losing your temper or, or using harsh words or exploding, you will look so foolish and be ashamed of, of your behavior when all those around you are calm. The Bible also says in 1 Corinthians 15, I think, bad company corrupts good character. Well, then the opposite is also true in the sense that you will be blessed or your character will be godly when you are surrounded by people who are gracious, who are compassionate, who are slow to anger, who are bound in love and faithfulness and who are forgiving. Well, the problem is where are these people? Where are these people who are like God? Who are they? Do you know their names? Where do they stay? See, and brothers and sisters, that's where Jesus comes into the picture. Jesus, Son of God, Savior of the world, Prince of Peace, Suffering Servant, Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Lamb of God, Emmanuel, Good Shepherd, the Alpha and the Omega, and many, many more titles. Now remember, remember all those uh, qualities that we earlier talked about, okay? Compassion, gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness, okay, forgiveness. Remember all those qualities. Now imagine all these qualities becoming a walking, talking human being. So love, mercy, compassion, grace, forgiveness, they all become a person, become a human, become a life being. That is Jesus. And when the apostles first saw Jesus, they did not see all these qualities on, on day one. These qualities became evident to them over the months and the years that they walked with Jesus. They saw him have compassion on, on lepers. He touched them, he healed them. They saw him have compassion on the many sick and the paralyzed and uh, hundreds and thousands he, he healed wherever he went up to late night. He healed them and gave them back their physical condition, probably much better than it was before. <laughs> they saw him full of grace uh, when as a Jew, he spoke to Samaritans and Samaritans were a people whom the Jews disliked tremendously. 
he spoke to the Romans whom the Jews hated because they were their ruling oppressors. He spoke to Gentiles and the Jews thought all Gentiles were unclean. They would not even go to somebody's house. Jesus even spoke to women which was going against the culture of that time. He spoke to the Samaritan woman, he spoke to the adulterous woman, he spoke to uh, prostitutes, he spoke to demon-possessed women. This was Jesus, full of grace. They saw him having mercy on people by forgiving their sins. And they saw his tremendous love for people when he raised the dead. Remember the widow at Nain in Luke 7 and also the raising of Lazarus? But most importantly, they saw his love for them when he spread his arms and died on the cross. This was Jesus, okay, God in the flesh, walking, talking, living out 100% of these godly qualities on a daily basis. And that is why I want to call uh, this sermon or the title of this message to be like Jesus. Okay, to be like Jesus. Is this impossible? Is it possible? Yes? No? Maybe? What do you think? Let me ask you a question. Why would God give us a task or, or an objective that was impossible or very difficult to achieve? God is not cruel. God is kind. But at the same time, to be like Jesus means that you and I have to make the effort. We have to try hard to imitate him, not because we have to, but because we want to, because of his love for us. And that you and I should want to live a life that wants to please God. Yes, I agree, it's difficult to be like Jesus in our world today because we live in a fallen world. What do I mean? The whole world is groaning since the days of creation. Things are getting worse and worse each day. And why is that happening? Well, there is a being out there who is determined to get you and me to fail. He wants us to fall. He wants us to give up. He wants us to despair. He wants us to feel like we have no hope. This being or Satan is described by Jesus as a liar and the father of lies. Jesus also says that he is a murderer and he is a murderer from the beginning and there is no truth in him. Think about what Jesus is saying over here about this evil being. I mean, these are very, very strong words. And so we need to pay attention and, and be warned. Be warned about such evil influences that can rob us of our, our joy and take us away from God. I mean, you may, you may try hard and you want to be like Jesus, you want to be loving and, and compassionate and, and gracious and forgiving, but Satan is going to make it difficult for you. He does not want you to succeed. He will put thoughts in your head which are ungodly. He will put people in your life to influence you and lead you astray. And you and I, we know the time that we have messed up. We know where we have been astray. We know how we have offended God. We know how we've broken relationships. We know our temper, our deceit, our immorality, our harsh words, our kindness. So all of us have been influenced by him one way or the other. But Jesus overcame the evil one and that's why by following him and being like him, we can also overcome the evil one. 
Now let's try and understand more about this evil being, this, this Satan, this demon who has been there from the very beginning. Let's try and understand more about him. Okay. In Isaiah chapter 14 verses 12 to 15, we can get an idea how Satan <clears throat> has been uh, for a long time uh, influencing uh, the world. Let's read. How you have fallen from heaven, morning star, son of the dawn. You have been cast down to the earth, you who once laid low the nations. You said in your heart, I will ascend to the heavens. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit enthroned on the mount of assembly, on the utmost heights of Mount Zaphon. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the Most High. But you are brought down to the realm of the dead, to the depths of the pit. This is what Isaiah is telling us about a being who was there in the heavens called the morning star or son of the dawn. Satan was there in the beginning. He had a very exalted position. It was like he was very close to God. He was, can you imagine, a morning star, a son of the dawn. But then pride entered his being because he thought he could raise his throne above the stars of God. And in verse 14, I will make myself like the Most High. Pride entered his heart and he was cast down. We also get a glimpse of his behavior or what he was like in Ezekiel chapter 28. In fact, Ezekiel chapter 26, 27, 28 is all about a prophecy against the king of Tyre. But don't just think it's about Tyre. Think about the, the, the power behind the king of Tyre. It was an evil power, okay? So some verses I want to read in Ezekiel 28. Verse 2, Son of man, say to the ruler of Tyre, this is what the sovereign Lord says. In the pride of your heart, you say, I am a God. I sit on the throne of a God in the heart of the seas. But you are a man and not a God. Do you think you are as wise as a God? Yes, it's about the king of Tyre, but think about who is influencing him and who's giving the words of that. Verse 11, the word of the Lord came to me, son of man, take up a lament concerning the king of Tyre and say to him, this is what the sovereign Lord says. You were the model of perfection, full of wisdom, perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone adorned you, ruby, topaz and emerald, chrysolite, onyx and jasper, sapphire, turquoise and beryl. Your settings and mountings were made of gold. On the day you were created, they were prepared. You were anointed as a guardian cherub, for so I ordained you. You were on the holy mount of God. You walked among the fiery stones. You were blameless in your ways on the day you were created, till wickedness was found in you. Verse 17. Your heart became proud on account of your beauty, and you corrupted your wisdom because of your splendor. So I threw you to the earth, and I made you a spectacle a spectacle of you before king. So here, obviously, the king of Tyre was not in Eden, in the garden of God. It's talking about Satan. He was there in the very beginning. He was beautiful. He was kind of the right hand of God. But what happened to him? He became proud. And so he was cast down. When we read Revelation chapter 12, verse 7 to 9, we find out what happened. It says there, then war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back. But he was not strong enough, and they lost their place in heaven. The great dragon was hurled down, that ancient serpent called the devil, or Satan, who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled to the earth, and his angels with him. So here we find out that Satan did not go down willingly. There was a war and he was overpowered and thrown down to this earth. And it's very clear now that he leads not only you and me, but he leads the whole world astray. I think many people don't even know that. In Revelation 12, verse 12, it says, Therefore rejoice, you heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe to the earth and the sea, because the devil has gone down to you. 
He is filled with fury because he knows that his time is short. Yes, those in the heavens can rejoice, but you if you if you are on earth, beware. I mean, be alert. Keep your guard up. He is after you. He is mad. He is angry. He wants to take as many as he can with him. The countdown has started. Yes, Jesus is coming soon. He knows that. And so, Satan wants to take as many as possible with him. He is destructive. He is violent. He is relentless, and he is very very proud. He thinks that he can be like God. You know, Jesus defeated him at the cross. And yes, for those who repent and get baptized, they receive the Holy Spirit. And 1 John 4, 4 tells us, "You dear children are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world." We can take great comfort and confidence from this verse because John tells us that the Holy Spirit that is within us is greater than the evil one who has control of this world. So brothers and sisters understand this you can overcome the evil one by allowing the holy spirit of god which is in you to guide you in how to overcome satan and his demons now maybe you think oh i can't overcome satan he's too powerful or maybe you think i'm struggling with the same sin over and over again or maybe you think it's just this bug i can't do it it's not possible well Let me just remind you about the lives of the apostles who were very different in the early days when they followed Jesus. Okay? For example, James and John, they were called sons of thunder, right? In Luke chapter 9 we read that they wanted to call down fire from heaven to destroy a village which did not want to welcome Jesus. <laughs> okay? James and John, sons of thunder. Jesus, these guys don't want to welcome you. Let's call down fire from heaven and nuke it. And of course, they were rebuked soundly by Jesus. And then, when you read the letter of first, the first letter of John, okay, first John, you can see how in his letter there's just so many verses about love. In fact, he's called the apostle of love. Okay, it's just overflowing. It's like you know, he's telling us to love one another, that God loves us. Uh, so many different verses. on love this is a man who no longer i think a son of thunder but he become a son of love he changed james and john who wanted to be at the right and left hand side of jesus and want power and glory hey james is the first apostle to get martyred in acts chapter 12 he gets beheaded can you believe he lays down his life so they changed think about peter okay peter who is impulsive emotional a uh, quick temp quick tempered you know denies that he knows jesus this man is a totally changed man when you read uh him standing up in acts chapter 2 and delivering his first sermon and when you read first and second peter he talks about being submissive and and suffering for the faith and living for god and being eager to serve and living holy and godly lives these men and i'm sure many women I'm sure there are a lot more. They got transformed after they walked with Jesus for three years. And ordinary men like them who changed means that you and I can also change. The one thing that holds us back is our pride, our ego, our sense of self-importance. Do you know who I am? Pride is ungodly. pride destroys pride blinds you to reality you think that you are right and everybody else is wrong and the bible teaches us very very clearly that god opposes the proud but that he loves the humble there are many verses that says he esteems the humble and holds them in high regard that the humble will be exalted but the proud will be laid low And so ask yourself today am i proud or am i humble Here are some questions for you to answer okay answer yes or no Are you ready Question number 1 I seek other people's opinion or advice when i have to take a new job Yes or no 
Next one. I seek other people's advice when I want to move to a different city. Next question. Yes or no? I ask for input in my marriage. Next one. I ask for input in how to bring up my kids. And ask yourself, when is the last time you asked for input into your marriage or you asked for input into bringing up your children? Next question. I get advice when I want to invest money in different schemes. I'm asking this question because I know that there are many brothers and some sisters who have lost money because of foolish decisions that they have made. Here's another question for you. I am quick to say sorry when I have done something wrong. I am quick to apologize to my spouse when I have had a fight. Yes or no? Here's another one. When I am sick and I am told to go to the doctor, I go. Because I know that many of us, we wait until we get more sick and then we decide to go. Next question. I look into the mirror very often. I take lots of selfies. I'm very concerned about my image in various social media. Yes or no? You know, all these are because of yourself. I, me, myself. Another question. I am eager and quick to confess my sin. And here's the last one. I wash dishes, I wash the clothes, I clean the house. Nothing is too low for me to do. And you know, if you if you think you are humble, well then ask your spouse, ask your kids, ask your mentor, your spiritual advisor, because they may answer differently. And don't be surprised if they say that you are proud, because it's a chance to change. And brothers and sisters, Jesus was humble. This is one of the most important qualities that anyone can possess, because God loves humility. And that is why God exalted Jesus to the highest of places and gave, gave him a name that is above all names and that his, at his name every knee will bow down. Wow! Think what humility can do for you. It can raise you up to a high place. And what can pride do for you? Well, here are some Proverbs for you. Proverbs 16.5 The Lord detests all the proud of heart. Be sure of this, they will not go unpunished. Proverbs 16 verse 18 Pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall. Proverbs 13 verse 10 Where there is strife, there is pride. But wisdom is found in those who take advice. Proverbs 26 12 Do you see a person wise in their own eyes? There is more hope for a fool than for them. James 4, 6 God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. These verses, I don't need to elaborate on, they are self-explanatory. God hates the proud, they will fall. Why do you want to be on the side that God opposes? And so, beloved family of God, in conclusion, we have all been made in God's image to reflect his amazing qualities. You and me, men and women, made in God's image, in God's likeness. And we are supposed to reflect these qualities we talked about, but we live in a fallen world where Satan and his demons attack us. Where the whole world is under control of the evil one. But we can win the battle by focusing on one thing, and that is to be like Jesus. And to be like Jesus is to reject pride and to love humility. This transformation does not happen in one day. It takes years and years and lots and lots of lessons. Lessons that will involve humbling you and me. But love it because in the end, the world will reject you, but God will exalt you. And that is what truly matters. Amen. What a beautiful sermon that was, right? What an apt reminder 
that we are made in the image and the likeness of the God of the universe. Imago Dei. And that we are called to live out the purpose for which we were created. Not just being image bearers, but also image reflectors. Thank you so much, Mark, for this wonderful sermon. And if there was anything that touched your heart through God's word this morning, take those things into account. Ask the Lord for wisdom and strength to bring about the required changes so that we may be conformed to the image of the Lord Jesus for his glory. Now, before we end the podcast for today, let's have a final song. And I'll be seeing you next Sunday, same time, same place, right here on YouTube. Until then, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of you. Amen. Merry Christmas. We want to wish you a Merry Christmas.